Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over the Thule Hitching Post Pro 4 bike rack here on a 2022 GMC Terrain. So this is what our bike rack is going to look like installed on our terrain here. We only have one bike attached now. So just a couple things to point out about the vehicle. Number one, your reverse camera is going to be mostly blocked by the bike rack and your bike. So you're not going to get great visibility out of that when you do have the bike rack attached. But your rear windshield there, you still have plenty of visibility and you can still use your mirrors as well. So you're not compromising any safety. You just don't get the convenience of your backup camera. So there is two main styles of bike racks on the market. We have the hanging style, which is what this is, and then we have the platform style. So what the hanging style do really great is, number one, they're typically lighter weight than the platform style, so they're easier to get on and off the vehicle. Number two, they're gonna be much more cost effective when you compare it to a similar platform style rack. Now, one thing that the hanging style bike racks don't have, and that's a very high weight capacity. You're limited to 35 pounds per bike. The platform style racks, on the other hand, can usually accommodate much heavier bikes. So depending on what you have, this may be a great option for you, unless you have some of those heavier bikes, in which case you need to look into the platform style rack. Now, one thing I do want to point out with a hanging style rack, they're really designed to be used with those bikes that have that nice flat horizontal top tube there. However, there are plenty of bikes that don't have that, such as women's and children's bikes. And if that's the case for you, you can still use this rack. You're just gonna to need to pick up an adapter bar, which Thule offers. So with our rack here, we're gonna get three points of contact. We have two on the top tube, and then we have one down here. Now, the top two are pretty standard, but this one is sort of an optional feature. It is sort of an upgraded feature to a lot of the nicer hanging style bike racks. And what this is designed to do is, it's gonna basically help prevent your bikes from swaying back and forth as much, so they're not banging into one another. So when we've arrived at the trails or we're just simply ready to use our bike, it's very easy to take off. We're gonna have three of these little straps here. Now these straps are super durable and there's also multiple holes here to accommodate different bike shapes. So we'll go ahead and just pull those off there. As you can see, super easy. We've actually had these on here for this bike rack for quite a long time and there's really no signs of wear whatsoever. But now we're ready to just lift up and off. So with a hanging style bike rack there, it is sometimes a little bit harder to get your bike on and off because you have to lift up a little bit higher, whereas a platform style, you don't have to lift as much. So again, platform styles are gonna be more money. So if you're looking to save some money here, this hanging style bike rack is an excellent option. It's just gonna be a little bit more work to get your bikes on and off. So if you're curious how much overall length you're adding to your vehicle with the bike rack installed, whether that be because you park in a garage or one reason or another, we can go ahead and give you that measurement now. So just measuring from the back hatch here to the outwardmost point on the arms, you're looking at about 38 inches. But this bike rack has a great feature because we can actually swing these arms down for a more compact storage. Now this is gonna come in handy whether you're storing the bike rack in the garage so it's not as large, or if you just like to leave your bike rack attached on the vehicle because you frequently use it. All we're gonna do is simply pull this pin here, let our arms swing down, and then we'll re-secure it there in the stowed position. Now, if we take that same measurement before, you're going to see it's much less because we basically folded the bike rack in half. So now you're only looking at about 16 inches. So if you are one of those people that like to leave the bike rack attached to the vehicle, you're probably wondering how you're going to get things in and out of the hatch with the bike rack attached. Now, normally you would have to move the bike, remove the bike rack entirely to do this. But with this rack here, we have a nice tilting mass here. As we can show you, it's the same process as the arms. We'll just simply pull that pin out and then we're just gonna let our rack fall. There's a nice little built-in rubber stop there so you don't have to worry about it hitting the ground. Now, I will like to point out that you do have to have your bikes removed for this here. But as you can see now, we can easily get into the hatch of our vehicle, get anything we need out or put it in and we have plenty of space to do this. And then when we're done, let's go ahead and let the hatch hook close and we'll just lift the mask back up into position and re-secure it. So in regards to weight capacity, we touched on this a little bit earlier. I'd just like to go in depth a little bit more. It's 35 pounds per bike. Now, a common question we get is people, if they're only using two bikes, can they carry heavier bikes? Unfortunately not. We are still only rated to 35 pounds because that's what our cradles are actually rated for. So you cannot exceed that in under any circumstance. Now, one thing I would like to point out is that if you're only carrying a couple bikes, make sure you carry those in the cradles closest to the vehicle. 
So if we take a closer look at the shank of the bike rack, you will notice that we use an adapter here, which adapts it from one and a quarter inch to two inch. So therefore this bike rack, you can actually use it with both one and a quarter inch trailer hitch receivers and two inch trailer hitch receivers. So there are a couple different sizes for this vehicle. So no matter which one you have, you're gonna be covered here. Also, if you have multiple vehicles with different hitch sizes, you're gonna be covered there as well. So this rack also utilizes an anti-rattle hitch bolt. And what that means is to secure the rack to the trailer hitch, it uses a threaded bolt. And when we tighten that down, that's gonna further secure the connection with the rack. So if we go ahead and just shake the rack here, you can see I'm actually shaking the entire vehicle. There's no movement whatsoever inside that receiver tube. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna keep your bike rack, it's gonna help it hold up better over time. And it's also gonna keep your bikes more stable on the rack so they're not getting damaged. So in summary, you really can't go wrong with the Hitching Post Pro. This is actually one of our best selling bike racks and for good reason. Now, this certainly isn't the top tier bike rack that Thule offers with some of their other lines, but it's a good middle of the road options. You get some great features such as the anti-rattle hitch bolt and the anti-sway cradle. So it's a great bike rack, whether it's your first bike rack or you've been using bike racks for years. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side-to-side -side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then, onto our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or even uneven pavement. Last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway. And that's gonna do it today for our look at the Thule Hitching Post Pro 4 bike rack here on our 2022 GMC Terrain.